My next guest is very controversial. Because he is very controversial, I'd like you to first meet a man who is very familiar with controversy. At the age of 30, he was editor of the New York Daily Mirror. At, uh, later on, he made some nine parachute jumps during World War II with the troops and was a war correspondent. Uh, was first into Hiroshima after the bombing. Uh, he uh, was the man who really broke the deadlock at the uh, Republican National Convention, and, uh, which resulted in President Eisenhower accepting the nomination. And in addition to that, he, I guess, is the uh, real founder and the starter of interview shows on television with his lovely wife, Jinx. Ladies and gentlemen, meet my guest, Mr. Tex McCrary. I know uh, you are feeling much more familiar in this kind of a show uh, than anybody, having uh, really started it. I think, uh, Tex, before we get into our conversation, I think the topic of conversation is the guest I'd like to introduce and also like you to hear. Uh, I mentioned the fact that he is really controversial. Uh, his uh, performer's uh, standpoint has really been uh, to the college audience and to the younger generation and his major audiences uh, among the college students uh, and abroad and his concerts at Carnegie Hall and all has always been sold out. Uh, not sellouts in the sense they have been sold out. He is called uh, controversial. Maybe one of the reasons is perhaps the fact that on a recent album of his, which I have here, instead of the usual uh, back liner notes, the back cover liner notes, he um, reprinted the poems of Mao Tse Tung. And uh, when asked why he did that, his uh, explanation was that anyone who writes that kind of poetry can be all bad. I would like you uh, to meet uh, him right now. And before we meet him in person, as far as our conversation is concerned, I'd like him to perform a couple of songs uh, that are not only controversial, but very timely right now. Uh, they speak of war and religion. And the songs are self-explanatory. Please greet. Mr. Phil Oakes. The other night a voice came to me, turned out it was God. I said, Oakes, wake up, this is God here, over. So I said, you're putting me on, of course, Lyndon. And so he uh, did a few tricks for me, moved the bed back and forth. Um, trembling, I asked, what is it you want, O oh Lord? And he said, well, frankly, Phil, I went downtown the other day, saw the greatest story ever told, the Bible. Couldn't believe it. He said, things have gone too far with this religion, and he wanted me to do something about it. But what could I do, me, a humble boy from the six? And then I remembered I was a songwriter, so I sat down and wrote this song, which is a hymn about Christianity. The first uh, anti-hymn, I think. Christian canon. Have fired at my days with the warning beneath the holy blaze and bow to our authority, say the canons of Christianity. All oh, the children will be sent to school. Warn the canons of Christianity. Holy hands will count the money raised. Like a king, the Lord is richly praised on a cross of diamond majesty. Say the canons of Christianity. Missionaries will travel on crusades. The word is given, the heathen souls are saved. Conversions to our morality side the canons of Christianity. Defend your soul on the battleground, and the Lord will march beside. 
beside me drawn the cannons of Christianity. Cathedral walls will glitter with their gold, and the sermons speak through silver roads, building castles amidst the poverty, say the canons of Christianity. Worship now and wash your sins away. Drop the coins, fall to your knees and pray. Cleanse the world of all hypocrisy. Smile the canons of Christianity. Christian canons have fired at my days with the warning beneath the holy blaze. And bow to our authority, say the canons of Christianity. Thank you, and God bless you. And now, a song about, uh, <clears throat> about the nature of war and, and about these criminal times with our criminal government called uh, I Ain't Marching Anymore, pardon my English. to the wars, always the young to fall. Now look at all we've won with a saber and the gun. Tell me, is it worth it all? For I stole California from the Mexican land, fought in the bloody Civil War. Yes, I even killed my brothers and so many others. the German trench in a war that was bound to end all wars. Oh, I must have killed a million men, and now they want me back again, but I ain't marching anymore. It's always the old to lead us to the war, always the young to fall. Now look at all we've won with a saber and the gun. Tell me, is it worth it all? For I flew the final mission in the Japanese sky, set off the mighty mushroom roar. When I saw the cities burning, I knew that I was learning that I ain't marching anymore. Now the labor leaders screaming when they close the missile plant. United Fruit screams at the Cuban shore. Call it peace or call it treason. Call it love or call it reason. But I ain't marching anymore. Oh, I ain't marching There are two subjects that we're into, uh, which we wanted to do, to uh, allow our audience in Texas, of course, to 
be able to study, and that was the, the two subjects, which of course are very controversial, war and religion. I now, after giving some of your background, I turn to you, Tex, to make some comment about either one of the songs, or both, or the overall attitude of what is being said and, and listened to in uh, concert halls all over the country. It's a very popular young man in concert. Well, first, let me suggest that failure couldn't possibly be a communist because you're gifted with a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, second, that I'm delighted to know that you come from Indiana, where uh, Cole Porter came from. Uh, Ohio. Ohio, I'm sorry. Right. I beautiful gave you Ohio. Right. <laughs> Middle West, but still, yeah. you do your own lyrics, you write your own music, and you perform, as Cole Porter did. Uh, I think you are a voice of your times, as he was of his. There are different times, so the voice is different. When I was growing up, what was called earth music, you know, yeah. was written and performed best by Negroes. I feel that the music of today, like your audience here, somehow the music of today has been taken away from the Negroes. I told you the story, Murray. I took a camera through the audience of 65,000 youngsters who came to hear the Beatles in Shea Stadium, and I looked all night to find Negroes to get photographs of them responding to the Beatles' music. I think it's too bad that the sound of today in music has been taken away from Negroes, I feel, because they are the only people who really have something to test about. You know, our audience has some questions, and uh, we'd like to have, give them a chance in our, uh, at the podium. Would you state your name? Uh, Murray, my name is Bart McClendon. Uh, I was wondering if I may ask more than one uh, a very quick question. You certainly I, uh, may. Phil, uh, do you believe, uh, as, uh, as this ageless warrior in your song uh, does, that uh, the soldiers ought to uh, uh, get up and, uh, and fight the government and not, uh, not, go up, not go up and join the army when they're called? Yeah, yes, I, I don't. I don't think uh, anybody should. Uh, I, I, well, well, it's it's due to the, to the time. I wrote the song in the '60s, at the, at the very beginning of the Vietnamese War, and I think the song's been more than borne out. Uh, I, yes, I do think people should not go into the army now, uh, because I think that the army has been distorted. I, mean, I, I think I think it's a different army. In so many ways, it's a different army and a different flag and a different idea of a country than what was going on in World War II. I, th I, do, I don't I don't think a, an honorable citizen, young male. Uh, should go into this army because this army is involved in a, what I consider immoral practices. You said something uh, which I wanted to, to, to find out because he gave an answer which didn't make, uh, which only answered one part of the question. You asked, would you uh, encourage the soldiers to take up arms against the exactly. country itself, against the government? Exactly. Overthrow the, the question the violent overthrow overthrow yeah. the guards. Would that, you encourage the students? Uh, the young people in the country today not to join the army, and yes. B, would you encourage the army, uh, the men in the army, to desert? Yes, I would. I would uh, think that it, it's, it's, it's gotten that poisonous that it's one of those rare times where desertion is not dishonorable. Yes. Do you have? And, and, and I mean, if, if there was an implication in your question about, about attacking the government, the soldiers attacking the government. No, I don't. I don't think so. Um, I, th I think uh, I think there's still room for for uh, for, cert for certain amounts of civil disobedience and well, massing of numbers where it's not necessary. Well, yeah. what what else could it be called? You, you have to be attacking the government when you defy laws, don't you? Intellectually, yes, and and yes. Well, intellectually, in any other way. Yeah. Well, right. Well, there's a difference between that and 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 going to Washington with bayonets. Look, what you what you're going to have here, aren't you, is a uh, a type of lawlessness uh, that yes. Uh, that is going to become the same thing. You're advocating in many ways, uh, aren't you? And a type of system where a person would obey a law only if he thought that law was just. That's no, not right. no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about a new, a new system. I'm, I'm talking about uh, a reaction to, to what I consider a government gone mad or gone criminal. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and, and I'm, I'm saying that as the way things stand right now with their current policies, I, I, I think. Uh, I think it's time for a radical change in this government's foreign policy, and, and one of the ways to force that radical change is for them to realize that, that they can't even command the respect of their own, the, the, the obedience of their own armies. Because right. Can you seriously believe this is the way to do it, for everybody to get up and desert out of our army? 
What would become of well, America? Well, that's not the primary thing I'm, a, I'm asking for, to, for mass desertion. I mean, you said, am I in favor of that? I said yes. You know, primarily, it, it would have been better if they hadn't gotten in the first place, so they wouldn't be faced with, with that other question of desertion. I, th I think they should have, well, well you, that, yeah, in that, hindsight, they should have had the foresight not to go bring, into the army. Can I, may, I, may I interrupt I'm to sorry. ask you a question? I'm sorry. Uh, do you believe that uh, Mr. Oakes uh, should continue to sing these songs? He has the right to sing. Well, yes, I do. Kind of yes, I do. And and Tex, this is a, this is a, a question that I wanted to ask you. I think uh, uh, that, uh, and I'm sure the people here in the audience would agree with me that there's uh, a, a, a tremendous amount of apathy here in the country. Uh, Mer or, uh, Phil is is actually doing, I think. Uh, and, and he surely doesn't mean to, I don't think, in this sense. Uh, he's doing the country a, a, a lot of good in that he is making people talk. You're making people think about the subjects. You're making people think about things that they can do about the, uh, about the questions. I, I completely disagree with everything you say or, or everything you said in, in, in that song. But I, I can only applaud your, your going out and, and uh, completing uh, my goal. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ron. Right. Thank you for your question. There's someone else at the podium who... Dana Kennedy of the Episcopal Church in Westport, Connecticut. Yes, I'm ho I hope I'm not what the now generation would call a clergy bopper. <laughs> Strokes. Yes? It occurs to me, interestingly enough, that you've invaded the religious field. Uh, you reminded me a little bit in your attitude of what I imagine the old prophets of the Old Testament were. They made up their own lyrics, and many of them sang them, as I understand it. They were also less than acceptable to much of the establishment of the ecclesiastical realm and the social realm. Uh, I'm wondering, do you think that there are any elements of the establishment which would be willing to listen to your music and your words? Oh, I, I think so. I, I think uh, what, what, if I ever I get an opportunity to reach them through the media, like this is a very rare television appearance for, for me. Uh, and and I, I, I am I am dealing with morality, you know, and and, and, and the that. great majority of the songs that I write, even the non-political ones, and uh, I mean, like the strangely enough, one city, Seattle, Washington, uh, uh, played a, a song of, of my album, and it's now it's now right now this week is a, a top five record and 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 a, a single, you know, and now the album is selling like 600 a day. And that's the first time, the first time in any city that I've had like sustained AM. Play and uh, and so so definitely and, and Seattle is a very middle class town you know and it's not it's not uh, as advanced you know in the sense of New, of New York or Boston or or Los Angeles would be with, with certain elements so I think I think that that proves uh, that there certainly are a large number of people uh, if given an opportunity. Father Kennedy, can I ask you what your reaction was? Because I was very anxious to know what your reaction is to a song like Canons of Christianity, where I think the lyrics deal with the fact of. Uh, 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 building uh, cathedrals of gold in the midst of poverty, and that Phil uses the word cannons uh, both as meaning laws and also as weapons. Uh, how did the... We also have cannons that are people, which of course are both law and weapons too. My reaction was that he was talking about two things, both adding up to power. One was money, one was authority. And I sensed that if he'd only gone a little bit further with his thinking, he would have probably and does admit that power is always necessary if you're going to get anything accomplished. The question is, do you use it for the right or do you misuse it for your own selfish thing? May I ask a musical question? Yes. I, I couldn't help notice while you were singing that even some of the people involved in the show were swinging with it. And the old prophets, I'm told, sang in the high moments of religion such as you're talking, they always sang. What is the added thing that music seems to bring to it? I mean, when, when the marriage of, of, of melody and lyrics together, it, you're, you're able to flower out, you know, with that, with that feeling, that, that vibration, and then have lyrics subordinated with that music that, that uh, comes together and, and, and encompasses meaning and communication. Father, perhaps this may be a clue to a lot of the clergy, I think maybe for you and a lot of your uh, colleagues, to go out and take guitar lessons and maybe get the <laughs> message across with that. I'm already watching with a great deal of interest. <laughs> Father, thank, Kennedy, you, thank, very you, very thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Which yeah. time are you going? Are we? Yeah, go on, Tex. Sure. Yeah. We're over now, but uh, it's okay. Yeah, right. Go ahead. I missed about this far and the smell of me being the first casual in Vietnam. Uh, you said I was the first into Hiroshima, which I was. Uh, I took 22 correspondents in there a week after the bomb fell. I still can smell it. 
from there, we went down to Hong Kong, to Hanoi, and Saigon. We landed on the field at Saigon. I was in a 51. We had two C-46s and two B-17s with Jeeps in them. We got out, and all the British planes on the field were, bla were blazing. We went down, no ground fire, so we landed. We got out, we got in the Jeeps, and we looked like either the rascals or typical Americans. We smelled like Americans. We had American battle flags on our jackets. Uh, we had beards that were not grown for effect. We were grown because we didn't shave, you know, couldn't. Uh, and we had American flags on the British called it the bonnets, the hoods of the jeeps. We were stopped by people in black pajamas, waving red rags on the end of bamboo poles. And they had a motley collection of weapons that were Japanese, French, German, everything. One of them spoke very good English, a graduate of the Columbia School of Journalism. Came out, identified us, welcomed us, and said, go through. We were Americans. We went a mile down the road. We were stopped at a roadblock manned by Indian troops, British Indian troops. It took us an hour to identify ourselves and get through our allied lines to headquarters. Now, with me, I had these correspondents, but with me also, I had, I will not name him because his widow and his mother still live here, uh, the head of the OSS mission. He was a graduate of Cambridge University. He had a sandy mustache. Like all the OSS people, he affected British battle dress because the British ran intelligence. He had a protective coloration. We took them through. The commanding general in Saigon was General Gracie, a caricature of an English general, Northwest frontier type. He was incensed that Americans could go where Englishmen couldn't. He had us take the flags off our battle jackets, paint the flags off the hoods of the Jeep. We got drunk, had a wonderful night, and couldn't wait to go back would, yes. and file the story <laughs> of these, you know. We got up the next morning, we went back just as we'd come. We were three Jeeps. My Jeep got through, another Jeep got through, in which the Colonel, the OSS type, was stopped. We heard a shot, we turned around. The Viet Men, then Viet Cong, you know, yeah. the Viet Men in the black pajamas had taken his 45, put it in his mouth, blown the top of his head off. We came back sick, because death is one thing, but, you know. And the same guy who talked English with an American accent almost kicked the body to us and said, take him back and tell the sharp noses he is the first. It wasn't a color war. It was a bone structure. Tell the sharp noses he's the first. The first American casualty in Vietnam was killed because to the Viet Minh he looked English. He smelled English. He wore an English battle dress. So what we had done was inherit a colonial war. We are not colonialists. And yet, your generation has inherited an empire. Not mine, yours, and the boy here. Your generation has inherited an empire of obligation without authority. There's no profit for anybody in that kind of an empire. Every other empire in history has been authority without obligation. Now, my only point in all this is, yeah. uh, stay well. This country needs your voice singing. And I'm only sorry that Henry Morgan didn't stay around to hear that there is one sound of music in your generation that is literate. You talk English with an American accent, but do you know that all around this world for the rest of your life, people of many races, are going to stop saying, gee, you speak English, and they're going to start saying, gee, you speak American. Yeah. You know? You speak American, and you speak well. Gentlemen, Stay I well. wish that uh, well. we could go on, because if it gets more interesting, I think, I want, first of all, I want to thank you, Tex, and I want to thank you, Phil. I uh, tried to prod both of you. I would just like to say this, <laughs> if I may. I think You're the, the catalyst on the hot tin roof. <laughs> and, uh, I think I enjoy the position, indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please uh, 
say goodbye with me to Mr. Tex McCrary and Mr. Phillips.